there, second grade. So um, I'm going to read you a story today that just might tie in with something that you're doing in uh, English, language arts, ELA, uh, reading. And it's a fable, but it is a fractured fable. And the author of this story is Margie Palatini, and she's the one that wrote all of those really silly, funny fractured fairy tales that we like to read in our library. We have tons and tons of them. She's so funny. Um, so this one is an Aesop's fable that has been twisted and, and made silly and little things stuck into it. And so, of course, it's not exactly the fable, but you get the general idea. But the thing that I really love about really all of Aesop's fables, they teach you lessons. This one in particular teaches you to, A, not give up when you want something, um, that there's every problem has a solution, you just have to find it. But it also teaches you to listen to other people's ideas. Sometimes that can be really, really hard when we think we have such a great idea. We don't think we need anybody else's help, but sometimes somebody else can help to make our idea even better if we just listen and work together. So our story is called Lousy, Rotten, Stinking Grapes. And it is reimagined by Margie Palatini and illustrated by Barry Moser. Lousy, rotten, stinking grapes. Where are the grapes? Fox eyed a bunch of tantalizing grapes hanging from a vine growing high up on a tree. Tantalizing is like, oh my goodness, I need to have those. Those juicy morsels are for me, he said with a grin. The problem was, Fox was only so high, and the grapes were so, so, so high. No matter, said he. I am sly, clever, smart. After all, I am a fox. He made a plan. And this to that, multiply that to this, subtract here from there, carry the two, minus the one, and voila! Grapes! Looking at those grapes up in the tree and making his plan. Don't you touch that, please. It will move. Can you come step over here? When you're done, can I have the iPad? Sure. Hop, skip, jump, flying leap, and no grapes. Fox climbed out of the thicket and brushed off his coat. Perhaps a bit of a boost is needed. But where to get a boost? <coughs> Fox turned. He grinned. Why, Bear, old buddy, I say, do you like grapes? Grapes, said Bear. Uh, uh, duh, uh, duh. Do I? I think I do. I, I, I think I do. Uh, uh, yup, I do. So here's Bear coming. For what? And there's Fox falling out of the tree. For what? Mom. Excellent! Look and listen, here's the plan, explained Fox. You stand here, I will stand on your head there. On the count of three, you give a bit of a boost and voila! Grapes! Bear looked at the plan. He looked at the grapes. He looked at the tree. He stared at his big front paws and thought, Uh, duh. You know there, Fox, I'm thinking maybe I could just wrap my paws. ta 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 ta, -ta, -ta interrupted Fox. Bear, 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 my dear dim buddy. Your job is brawn, not brain. You leave the thinking to me. After all, I am a fox. Sly, clever, smart. I know how to get grapes. Bear shrugged, uh, if you say so. Bear stood here and Fox climbed up and stood on the top of Bear's head there and Fox counted. One, one. Two, three, and no grapes. Fox brushed off his coat and straightened his nose. And maybe more lift and thrust and oath is needed here. Bear shrugged. If you say so. Now, where to find oomph? Pat slap, pat slap, pat slap. Fox peered down at the pond and grinned. Why, beaver, dear pal, I say, do you like grapes? Grapes, said beaver. Oh, yes, indeedy, indeedy, I do. 
Excellent. Look and listen. Here's the plan, explained Fox. Bear stands here. You stand on Bear's head there. I stand on your tail. And on the count of three, Bear gives a boost as you give an oomph, which brings me there and voila, grapes. Well, Beaver looked at the plan. Well, he looked at the grapes. He looked at the tree. He tapped Mom. his front tooth Mom. and thought, I know I see. A fox, I'm thinking if I just started chewing on that tree, ta 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 interrupted fox. Beaver, 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 my dentally challenged chump, you just mind the oomphing and leave all that thinking to me. After all, I'm the fox. Sly, clever, smart. I know how to get grapes. Beaver shrugged. Ah, uh, if you say so. Bear stood here, and Beaver stood on Bear's head there, and Fox stood on Beaver's tail. One, two, three, and no grapes. Fox climbed out of the brambles. Just need an inch or two more scooch. Fox measured this. He weighed that. He turned around, and he grinned. Why, porcupine, you short scooch of a fellow. Do you like grapes? Grapes, said porcupine. I suppose I do enjoy a grape or two now and then. Excellent. Look and listen. Here's the plan, explained Fox. Bear stands here. Beaver stands there. You stand on Beaver's tail. I stand on you. And on the count of three, Bear boosts as Beaver oomphs while you scooch, which brings me there. And voila, great. Porcupine looked at the plan. He looked at the grapes. He looked at his back full of quills. Excuse me, Fox, but I have a suggestion. Perhaps if I just point my quill... Ta -ta 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 interrupted Fox. A porcupine, my little friend, let's not get all prickly. You'll just be a scooch and leave the ideas to me. After all, I'm the fox. Sly, clever, smart. I know how to get grapes. Porcupine shrugged. If you say so. I like grapes. Bear stood here and Beaver stood on Bear's head there and Porcupine stood on Beaver's tail and Fox stood very carefully on Porcupine's back. One, two, three, and no grapes. Fox rubbed his feet. He pulled a bramble from his tail. He uncurled his whiskers. What might be helpful is a wee catch and swing, said Fox, with a pencil and eraser. Yes, catch and swing should definitely do it. Beaver looked at Bear, who looked at Porcupine, and all three shrugged. If you say so. Fox spied two tiny eyes peeking through a bush. Ah, possum, my dear, do you like grapes? Me? whispered Possum shyly. Why, why, yes, I do like grapes. Thank you for asking. I like grapes very much. Fox grinned. Excellent. Look and listen. Here's the plan. Bear stands here. Beaver stands on Bear's head there. A porcupine stands on Beaver's tail. I stand on porcupine. You stand on me. And so on and so on and so on, etc., 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 which lifts you whose tail curls round here and then swings back to me, who I grab, ending up there, and voila, grapes. Possum stared at the grapes. She stared at the branch. She stared at the plan. Pardon me, said Possum, but it all seems so confusing and complicated. Uh, perhaps if I... Uh, da, 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 interrupted Fox. Possum, 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 my pet... Now, don't worry those few little hairs on your extremely unattractive head. Nothing to fret over and faint dead away. Trust me, my dear. After all, I am the fox. I am the one who is sly, clever, and smart. I know how to get grapes. Possum blinked. If you say so. So... Bear stood here, and Beaver stood there, and Porcupine stood on Beaver's tail, and Fox stood carefully on Porcupine, and Possum stood on Fox, ready to swing into action. One, two, three, and boost! 
oomph, scooch, swing. No grapes. What you doing? asked Skunk. Blast that bunch of fruit, grasped Fox, crawling out from under. There is simply no way to get at those grapes, and that is that. Possum looked at Porcupine, who looked at Beaver, who looked at Bear. I could run up the tree and toss them down, said Possum. I could aim and shoot them down, said Porcupine. I could cut them down, said Beaver. Uh, duh, I could give the tree a shake, said Bear. Fox glared. Oh, really? Then why didn't one of you say something before? Well, yeah, Possum yeah. spoke up. After all, you are the fox. About the Sly, bear. said Porcupine. Clever, said About Beaver. Oh, bear. smart, said Bear. The very smart. Fox turned with a huff and a sniff. Well, do as you wish. I, for one, wouldn't think of eating those lousy, rotten, stinking grapes now, even if I could. They're probably sour anyway. Oh, uh, if you say so. And we end with the grapes. So, every time Fox tried to enlist the help of someone else with his grand plan, that character tried to let Fox know that he had a, an idea that might help improve the plan and get them the grapes. But Fox was so sure that his plan was the best that he didn't listen to anyone. He could have gotten those grapes. So sometimes it is better to listen to others. Have a good day today, my friends.